is Tony Shaw. I'm the founder of Dataversity, and it is a pleasure to be with you remotely this morning. Um, for those of you who've been at uh, the uh, chapter meetings over the past few years, you'll know that uh, every year Mike uh, and the local chapter invite us in to tell you a little bit about the upcoming Enterprise Data World Conference. Um, so it's a pleasure to be here yet again for this uh, what is now an annual tradition. So uh, just for a little bit of context, um, uh, DEMA and the, uh, uh, the organization that uh, preceded Dataversity got together almost 20 years ago now to conduct the first of these combined events. And um, at the time, it, it had the very long title of the uh, DEMA International Symposium and Wilshire Metadata Conference. So thankfully, in recent years, we've rationalized that to Enterprise Data World. And I'm proud to say that uh, it's been a wonderful partnership over those many years. Um, the conference is uh, officially, it, it's the official annual educational conference for DEMA International. Uh, it is, however, open to uh, uh, anybody who wishes to attend, not just DEMA members, and uh, uh, hopefully through that that uh, combination, we're able to help DEMA each year, both with its annual budget um, and with the recruitment of new members. So it's been a very fruitful partnership over the years. And we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the specific DEMA advantages uh, in just a, a couple of minutes. So this year, we're going to be back in San Diego, uh, uh, April 17 through 22 of the dates, and we're at the Sheraton Hotel and Marina. This particular view that you can see is, I believe, from the uh, uh, the west-facing uh, windows of, of the hotel rooms. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a lovely location. Okay. So uh, on the presentation this morning, we're going to talk a little bit about what is Enterprise Data World, uh, what's in it for you as DEMA members. Uh, we'll talk some about the educational agenda this year. Uh, we're going to spend uh, particular time on the uh, professional development opportunities at the conference and then wrap up with a little bit of um, uh, final incentives uh, around uh, San Diego as a venue and how to register, get the best price on your attendance, and uh, some key deadlines to look for. So what is Enterprise Data World? Really, it's, it's virtually everything that you can imagine uh, about enterprise data, with um, the possible exception of, of some physical layer topics like storage. We really don't get into hardware very much at all. Um, but uh, pretty much every other aspect of, of data management, um, uh, methods around data management, some new data management technologies, and um, uh, how your organization can best leverage data for the objectives that it has. Uh, obviously, in, in recent years, uh, we've been spending considerable time around topics like big data and data governance. So it's quite a strong emphasis on those, but um, there are also advancements in some of the more traditional topics around architecture, data modeling, metadata management, and you'll see uh, those new developments reflected in the EDW program this year. The structure of the program is that we start with some in-depth tutorials. We then uh, graduate into the conference itself where we have shorter conference presentations, and in particular, we have a lot of case studies at EDW. So there's always a big emphasis on the peer-to-peer -peer sharing of experience. Uh, and in the past couple of years, we've introduced advanced seminars at the end of the, the conference so that uh, you can dive into uh, certain topics in greater depth. So uh, let me just talk a little bit about what's in this for DEMA and for DEMA members. So you'll recognize the, the DMBOC wheel on the left-hand side there. Um, we use this as a model for the, the track uh, 
breakdown at the conference. Um, and we try to get topics in, in basically all of these subject areas uh, so that the educational agenda is uh, con both consistent with DEMA's uh, objectives as an organization and also so that the material that you'll learn at the conference can support your uh, certification under the, the CDMP um, the CDMP certification. And as I say, we'll get to a bit more of that in just a moment. But um, the relationship between DEMA and Dataversity and the production of the, the conference is a, a business relationship. Uh, DEMA benefits from the, the profits of the conference. So, um, uh, you know, if you like, there's, there's a portion of all the profits of the conference that goes to DEMA International each year. Um, it is by far the largest international meeting of DEMA members in the world. Uh, and it's a great opportunity opportunity to meet with colleagues from a, around the world, around the country. Um, uh, there's a dedicated DEMA track, by which we mean there are topics uh, specific to the DMBOK and the CDMP. Uh, and there are also uh, meetings between uh, local chapter president so that uh, DEMA can get its business done during the week of EDW. Uh, there is on-site CDMP certification, uh, which means that there are dedicated times for you to take the CDMP exams. Uh, also on Sunday, there's a free workshop that is designed to help you prepare for CDMP certification. And all of the hours that you spend at EDW qualify for the recertification requirements of existing CDMP holders. So, um, you know, it, it serves many purposes on that level. Um, this particular year, uh, DEMA International is pleased to offer all EDW registrants a free membership uh, to uh, DEMA International Central, which is a, a new um, I guess, category of membership, um, which will ultimately, uh, we hope, or Dana hopes, uh, will simplify the uh, ability of, of people from all over the world to join Dana, uh regardless of whether they have a, an active local chapter or not. So um, uh, just to describe in, in greater detail what some of the advantages of that will be, um, basically, everybody will have the opportunity to join DEMA International uh, as a, an EDW conference attendee with the benefits that you see here. Uh, I won't go through each of those individually, but uh, obviously there are a lot of discounts. There are, um, there's access to uh, the uh, DMBOK standards, uh, rather the, um, the data management standards uh, version two um, and all of these other things here. Uh, for those members who are, for those folks who are currently members of DEMA, there are also substantial discounts on actually attending Enterprise Data World. I'll mention those at the end of the presentation. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about the conference this year. Um, I'm thrilled that uh, Jim Tayo from BB&T uh, is able to kick us off this year. Um, uh, Jim's done a, just an amazing job. Uh, bb and is a large regional bank in, in the southeast of, of uh, the U.S. And, uh, but he's a wonderful speaker, has a great sense of humor. And um, so he's, he's taking a little bit of a lesson from Dave Letterman this year and having a top 10 list of the surprises that he's learned in developing a successful enterprise data office. The distinguishing thing about uh, Jim's success at bb and that uh, inspired us to invite him is that really he, he has um, accomplished an enterprise program of, of uh, governance and quality and, and uh, is moving into analytics now uh, in a way that, that most organizations uh, struggle to uh, achieve at the enterprise scale. So uh, thrilled to have Jim with us. Now, we always in the middle of the conference, we have what we affectionately call the fun keynote. Um, last year it was Graham Simpson. 
Uh, prior to that, we had a, a cellist and a, um, a speaker from Marvel Comics. This year, a gentleman who won't be well known to most of you, but uh, he's developed quite a reputation in the city of New York. Uh, ben Wellington works for a hedge fund, but in his spare time, he's a stand-up comedian and a data scientist. So kind of an interesting portfolio of interest that he has. But um, uh, Ben has been telling stories in the city of New York through his blog called iQuant about the city, telling stories about the city based on the data that the city makes available. Everything from the highest uh, yielding parking fine locations to uh, the price of, of uh, subway tickets. And um, he's discovered things in the data that uh, he then writes about and uh, literally brings about uh, changes in the city. Uh, one great example was that uh, he figured out that based on the price of a New York subway ticket, you know, it, one of the ones that you might buy that say you buy it for ten dollars and uh, it, uh, you know, every every time you take a, a trip, you scan it and it gets reduced. He he figured out that in fact you could never entirely use the funds that you had paid for. So he kind of embarrassed the city into changing the pricing structure of a New York subway ticket so that uh, you would always be able to use every penny of your ticket. So that's maybe a trivial example. There are a lot more around uh, everything from restaurant safety to, to uh, the action of uh, police officers and traffic cops and all sorts of things. Anyway. Uh, Ben's a very entertaining speaker, and you'll enjoy his talk. We're going to uh, wrap up the conference this year with uh, basically a town hall with Tom Redman. Um, many of you all know Tom uh, from his uh, his uh, book. He was the original guy to use the term data driven, but uh, uh, it only seemed appropriate in this year of a presidential election that we have a town hall format to wrap up the conference and talk about some really hard issues in uh, accomplishing the goals of, of good data management. Um, you know, uh, this was prompted by uh, a conversation I was having with Tom at one point about the notion that uh, so many organizations ask this question, you know, what's, what's holding us back from accomplishing things? It, it all seems so straightforward, you know, it, in theory, uh, doing data analytics and making improvements to operations or making better decisions is is simple. I mean, it, it's sort of obvious, and yet most organizations struggle to get there. So um, Tom's going to include that topic amongst his, his town hall questions and get everybody involved at the end of the conference and kind of work to this, some solutions. And one of the things uh, that we're doing uh, at EDW this year is we're co-locating uh, three additional events. Uh, in many ways, these are like uh, additional track sessions at the conference. Um, last year, we did this with the CDO Vision program. Um, uh, this is sort of the executive track, if you like, of EDW. And um, uh, everybody who signs up for EDW as a conference attendee is entitled to go to this and any of the other uh, additional programs. Um, there's no restriction on on what you can attend. These are sort of bonus sessions, if you like. Uh, but uh, we found in particular that having the executive track co-located was wonderful, not just for senior executives, but also those who are either aspiring to senior management or just uh, uh, trying to get a better sense for how senior executives think about uh, data strategy and innovation and analytics, et cetera. Um, so um, uh, this is a program where we, we basically put a microphone in the hands of everybody who's in the audience. Uh, we encourage a great deal of conversation. Uh, the presentations themselves are only about half the time uh, allocated to the agenda, the other half of the time is allocated to to um, 
uh, conversation and interaction. So um, that's the philosophy that we bring to this particular part of the program. <clears throat> and it's certainly if there are any, if, if you have a chief data officer or a senior uh, data management executive who's interested in attending, um, and if they want to just sign up for CEO Vision, that's fine too, they can do that. But, um, you know, that, that cross-fertilization of people at all levels was just very effective last year, so we're going to encourage that again. Another of the programs we're co-locating this year um, is the NoSQL Now program. Uh, this is a conference we've been running in San Jose, Silicon Valley for the past five years, and um, uh, so we're conducting basically the enterprise edition of NoSQL Now. The, the technologies around these new databases has progressed to the point where um, it's, it's uh, in much wider use amongst large enterprise customers now, not just a, a kind of an internet phenomenon. Um, and so uh, you'll see two dedicated tracks at EDW focused on NoSQL technologies. Um, and most of those will be uh, oriented towards, you know, evaluating different uh, databases which are appropriate to use under which circumstances. Um, these sessions uh, will, in many cases, be a little bit more technical, but some of them are, are business oriented as well. But, uh, you know, if you know your organization's moving in this direction, I think this is a wonderful opportunity to learn uh, some more about NoSQL technologies. And included in that are not just the database products per se, but uh, topics like Hadoop and Spark and those sort of things. The third additional program won't be as familiar to many of you, but um, uh, there's an organization in New York City called the uh, Enterprise Data Management Council. It's a, it's a consortium of financial institutions, which is uh, among many of its uh, ongoing projects is uh, something called FIBO, or the Financial Industry Business Ontology. And this is a, an initiative born out of the uh, financial crisis of a few years ago uh, and uh, a group of enterprising uh, technical folks within the, the uh, semantic web uh, community realized that some of the technologies that they were working on could have uh, contributed to uh, or, or contributed to the prevention of some of the, the issues that were prevalent during that particular financial crisis. In particular, uh, better understanding the risk uh, profile of financial institutions by connecting the, the uh, uh, various derivative products and, and uh, obligations that those financial organizations had to the, the final um, holder of those liabilities. So, um, uh, so this will be a, a single dedicated conference for two days. We're going to be focused on both the management and the technical aspects of uh, uh, implementing FIBO and uh, we did a, we did a one-day version of this program um, in Washington, D.C. at the last Enterprise Data World. It was very well received, so things have moved along considerably in the meantime. Certainly, if your organization is in the financial services industry, then FIBO is something that you're going to need to know about, um, if not now, then in the very near future. So this would be a great way to get some education there. Um, and the reason it's combined with Enterprise Data World is, frankly, there's a lot of the, the, the same people are working on problems uh, related to uh, enterprise data management as who are drawn into the FIBO community. So um, it's a great opportunity to get some extra synergy out of the EDW meeting. So uh, some of the hot topics this year, things that we, we have and haven't uh, addressed in the past. Um, I mentioned NoSQL databases. Uh, as Shannon can attest, uh, whenever we do a webinar or, or an article on data diversity around data modeling for NoSQL, um, you know, the, our, our page views and uh, webinar attendance is off the charts. This is just, uh, this is the hot topic in data modeling right now. Um, and for those who are involved with 
NoSQL, then um, you know they're finding that, that modeling is one of the sort of barriers to deployment in large enterprises because um, the the whole notion of schemaless data management is is a little bit foreign to a lot of them. So um, anyway, we'll we'll. Uh, have numerous topics, uh, numerous presentations around data modeling for NoSQL. Machine learning is the other super hot topic uh, through our publishing activities. So we're going to be talking about machine learning, giving you a, a chance to uh, understand what that is and how it might be relevant to you. Um, there are a lot of presentation proposals this year focused on privacy and ethics. Uh, I think a lot of this is probably driven by the European laws related to privacy, but um, also a lot of the, the uh, conversations or concerns that are being um, uh, raised here in the U.S., um, particularly around uh, sort of the governance of um, big data, um, uh, you know, concerns about um, uh, discrimination emerging when you rely simply on the data to to guide decision making um, without taking into account larger larger questions of equity and and fairness, et cetera. Um, so uh, we have numerous uh, discussions and panels around both those topics. Uh, believe it or not, metadata is as hot a topic as ever before. Um, uh, the, the big data world is helping to drive a lot of that. Uh, of course, we're, we're going to be spending uh, many sessions talking about data science and predictive modeling and uh, just to run through the rest of the list there, you know, visualization and storytelling, again, a lot of proposals this year on that. We're, we're even finishing up uh, one of the advanced seminars is on data storytelling this year. Um, data catalogs are a hot topic. Uh, everything is agile. Everything is in the cloud. Uh, everything is a service. Uh, you know, I, I don't need to tell you folks these things because you're living it every day, but um, uh, coming to the conference gives you a chance to sort of talk to other people about how they're managing these things, get different perspectives on uh, how to uh, bring these ideas into your organization, bring these new technologies in, and, and um, do it without the expensive lessons that would be involved in, in tackling this uh, for the first time. Learn something from other folks who are doing it, and uh, you'll save yourself a lot of grief. All right. Uh, I personally believe there's, there's, there have to be both personal and business reasons to commit to attending a week at a conference. So, um, you know, I think if it was all one or the other, then then uh, it, it just wouldn't be the same experience. So I think it's very important that uh, the week that you spend at EDW be personally valuable to you in terms of the skills that you you gain, the contacts that you generate, um, the, the preparation that you give yourself for um, both advancement in your current job and, and perhaps, uh, you know, where your career may take you in future. So uh, that's where most of those topics on the left are oriented. Um, the, the ones on the right, obviously, you need to give your employer uh, good justification for uh, the time and investment that, that you're going to be making by attending. Um, these are some of the, the things that we hear people say the most. Uh, they accomplished six months of research in, in just a few days, particularly with respect to a lot of the vendor organizations who will be uh, exhibiting at the program. You know, if you need to collect information on some new project or, or uh, you know, do research onto the best ways of approaching a particular problem, then can get an awful lot done in, in just uh, a couple of days at EDW. Uh, we find too that a lot of people say, well, you know, uh, I came here to validate our strategy. They weren't, they, they have something in place and they're not necessarily sure if it's if it's the right thing, but um, uh, by talking to other people, it, it gives them certainty about the direction that they're heading in future. Um, and then, you know, I think I think the notion of uh, an ROI on your investment is 
um, important too. So I mentioned, you know, you can learn a lot of lessons without having to pay the same price as, as those who've gone before, but also the idea of getting everybody on the team onto the same page, uh, having, you know, shared perspective and shared language around how to move forward is important. And um, what we've noticed also, we have a couple of companies this year who are bringing a team of people and they've asked us to arrange a meeting room for them uh, during and or after the conference so that they can sort of digest and, and use the uh, proximity to that knowledge and proximity to the, the um, learning that they've just gained to, to start making plans immediately. So uh, a couple of uh, international organizations that are planning to do that this year. All right. I mentioned uh, I talked some more about the CDMP. Uh, for those of you who have the CDMP already, um, you've probably received notice from Dama International that um, some things are changing. Um, I, I won't try to describe those to you myself. Um, uh, I, I don't speak directly on behalf of Dama International. However, um, there is some information on the Enterprise Data World site about the CDMP program and there are links to DAMA.org uh, for uh, full explanation. And certainly I, I would recommend that if you have a CDMP currently that you go to DAMA's website and read up on uh, the evolution of the CDMP. This uh, structure from of associate to practitioner, master and fellow, this is the new structure in place um, and uh, so anyway, that's well laid out on the DEMA website. Uh, the new CDMP exams will be available at EDW for the first time for those who uh, wish to get the CDMP for the first time. Um, those will be uh, available at the times listed on the lower left there, starting on Sunday, uh, Tuesday, and then Wednesday. Uh, the CDMP prep session is on Sunday from 10.30 to 2 p.m. So um, that's free for anybody who's registered for the conference. And I highly recommend that if your goal is to get certified during the conference or even if you want to do it but afterwards. Um, my understanding is that uh, CDMP is moving from a face-to-face um, -face proctoring model to an online one. So um, you know, you can you can attend that class and then do the exams later if you wish. But um, it's certainly convenient to to have them on site. Uh, you do need to bring a laptop, however, with Wi-Fi capability so that you can access the exams. Okay. So. Uh, whenever I tell people we're going to be in San Diego for anything, they always sort of sigh and say, oh, I, I hope I can go. Uh, it's a great town. Um, these are some of the, the classic tourist attractions in San Diego. Um, the zoo obviously is world famous. Um, uh, I frankly enjoy a lot of the restaurants down there. I just find the atmosphere in the city wonderful, the gas lamp area, et cetera. And we have, um, uh, the, the hotel is um, not right in the uh, guest lamp area, but we have buses that will take people in there each night. Um, it's, it's a literally a five minute cab ride if, uh, if you want to go on your own too. It's a, it's a great town and we always love going back there. This will be our third time in San Diego with EDW and everybody loves it. Okay. So um, to give you the best opportunity to attend and save money, um, uh, we always have what we call a DEMA dollars discount. Um, it is the largest of all of the uh, discounts associated with um, association membership or, or affiliation. Um, it's a $250 discount on uh, any of the conference options um, and the code that you need there is, is uh, DEMA417. So that's uh, what you need to, to use to, uh, to get what, uh, during the registration process to save that $250. Um, 
uh, you can combine that discount with the early registration incentives that we offer. So uh, the first of those expires on January 29. Uh, actually, just yesterday, uh, specifically for DEMA members, we've extended that to February the 1st. Uh, and if you're a member of the DEMA LinkedIn group, you'll get a reminder about this uh, next Thursday. But uh, so the best discount is available by um, February the 1st. Then uh, after that, there's, an, there's a discount also available by March 11. Uh, after March 11, we revert to full prices. So. Um, the discount by Feb 1st would be $550 in total, by March 11 would be $450. There's also additional discounts if uh, you have a group of people, uh, once you register four people, the fifth is free. Uh, if your organization needs us to spread that discount and give everybody 20% off, then um, we can do that. You just need to contact our registrar and, and let them know. So we can we can um, deal with whatever your payment structure uh, requires. Uh, the discount at the Sheraton is 200. Uh, pardon me. The discount at room rate at the Sheraton is $209 per night, and that rate ends on February 27. Uh, something I, I really should tell you, and this is not a Come on, it's it's true. We sold out of both, not just hotel rooms, but we actually sold out for the EDW conference last year. We had to stop taking registrations about two weeks in advance, um, something we've never done before. Um, and uh, I don't think we'll have to do it this year. But uh, you know, when we when we say that things sell out, we we. Don't say it just to get you to act right away. Um, it does sometimes happen. So, uh, in particular with hotel rooms, it, you know that that inventory can be limited. Um, if if not, the hotel selling out, uh, the group rate could sell out. So instead of selling rooms for two hundred nine dollars, the hotel uh, once they sell out might decide to sell them for three hundred dollars. So uh, just look into that before you make your reservation um, and try to get in early so that you can take advantage of those those good rates. All right. Uh, these things uh, obviously you won't write all these down, but uh, I do recommend trying to follow uh, us on Twitter for any announcements about the program. Uh, these are the ways you can reach us. The hashtag for Enterprise Data World is EDW16, and that's been pretty active lately. So. Participate in that, and then to me, it's right on the hour, so uh, it's a good time to finish up. But if you have any time for questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, uh, you are welcome to send an email to this address at the bottom, info at dataversity.net, or my personal address is tony at dataversity.net. So either way, we'd be delighted to hear from you. Mike, back to you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, I have a question for the room. Uh, 